Hello everyone. Welcome to our new episode of Chai Pay Stocks where Kalpak and I will be discussing another interesting company. And before I uh, begin the video for the day, I want to wish you all a very happy Diwali. It happens to be a day of Diwali when we'll really release this particular video. And uh, before starting uh, the video, I want to give the general disclaimer that please do not treat this video as a piece of investment advice. Do consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions. And we may have holdings in some or all of the companies that we discuss in this series. So, Kalpak, how are you today? Very well, Abhinit. Uh, wishing all our viewers a very happy and safe Diwali. 2020 has been a tough year, but let's hope that this Diwali turns it around. And uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, the, the company that we have for today is Grindwell Norton Limited. Uh, this is a company from the Saint Gobain group. Uh, Saint Gobain is one of the very old groups uh, headquartered in Paris, and uh, it's quite well known actually. Saint Gobain is quite a well-known group across the world. Uh, so Grindwell Norton is a is a subsidiary of Saint Saint Gobain, and they are uh, there in a couple of businesses, mainly on the industrial side. We will discuss exactly what are the business areas in which uh, in which Grindwell Norton operates. Uh, so before we actually get into the uh, the uh, product aspect, uh, Kalpak will walk you through the history of the company. Right, Avini. So uh, uh, Grindwell Norton has a very fascinating history. But before that, I'll just quickly tell you, Grindwell Norton is in the engineering and construction materials business. So they are basically manufacturers of uh, different uh, uh, materials that are required in various applications so they have thousands of materials that they have innovated and they supply to the market okay from adhesives to ceramics to refractories plastics and even some housing solutions so that looks a very promising history kalpa right from 1941 started by two entrepreneurs uh, sold the brand to a global you know giant like saint gobain and they have been, you know, they have been very focused, like we can see from the slide, they have been quite focused, you know, the products that they have uh, brought to the market. Uh, it looks like a very focused group to me. So, Saint Cobain is this, uh, you know, it's a massive organization and about two to three years back, they went through a restructuring of their business divisions, okay. So, uh, they have, uh, you know, they have four regional businesses, okay. And then they have one global high performance solution unit, okay. Now, uh, it's very heartening to see that uh, an Indian company, Rhineville Norton, it forms a crucial part of their global high performance solution, solutions unit. Okay. So, all the products that you mentioned, abrasives and ceramics and plastics, you know, silicon carbide, uh, they are a very integral part of the uh, high performance solutions unit. Okay. And uh, Grindel Norton in India has one particular subsidiary, which is uh, Saint Gobain Ceramic Materials Private Limited. Okay. Now, uh, another observation which I want to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, take our attention, uh, to, uh, take the attention of our viewers to is uh, this particular subsidiary in Bhutan. It is a subsidiary of Grindwell Norton and not a sub subsidiary of Saint Gobain uh, Global Group, right? So we see this quite, quite a few times where you know the subsidiaries are not a part of the Indian operations, but they are part of the global uh, operations of the holding company. Right. So uh, here's a you know here's a five-year stock price chart of uh, of uh, Grindwell Norton, and uh, it's quite good to see a very you know uh, consistently upward moving chart. If you just uh, if you just excuse COVID, okay, and uh, you know it looks like a chart of a FMCG company probably to me, right? And uh, if you see the valuations, the the PE ratio we have highlighted here is 33.1. Now. These, these kind of valuations in India are majorly enjoyed by, you know, consumption oriented companies. So is there any theme of consumption in this particular company? That's a question to be addressed. Okay. So we will address it going forward. Uh, but the, the, the point of mentioning the chart here is it's quite a consistent performer. Okay. At least historically it has been one. Right. Kalpak, over to you. All right, Abhinay. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, okay, so now we we'll look at the uh, business segments of uh, of Grindwell Norton, right? So uh, they this is how the company classifies it: a business, business, ceramics and plastics, and others. So uh, I will be doing a slight deep dive because it's important to understand what exactly they make, where exactly these products are used. Okay, but fifty-eight percent of the revenues comes from the abrasives business. 
and increasingly a very fast growing business for the companies ceramics and plastics which is then subdivided into the three segments and the another uh, uh, quickly emerging business that they call call as others okay so i'll come i'll start with the abrasives so the abrasive business you know it caters to a number of industries such as steel automotive auto components general fabrication construction etc so that these types are basically there are few types of abrasives like coated abrasives uh, bonded abrasives and super abrasives so super abrasives are abrasives made from diamond and uh, uh, cubic boron nitrate okay so these are very very hard materials used for cutting so diamonds are not just for you know jewelry but diamonds are ex uh, used ex exclusively in cutting of difficult to machine materials okay in india this industry abrasives has uh, two major players and uh, grindwell norton has a leadership po uh, position in several of the product categories so abrasives are then made into various different kinds of products thin wheels coated bonded etc okay but now increasingly besides these two companies carborundum and grindwell they have they are seeing uh, international players also enter the market as well as low cost chinese options also uh, starting to flood the market okay uh that being said uh, you know gno of granville norton will call gno gno offers a wide range of uh, you know cutting edge uh, abrasives uh, in the indian market while the mass uh, you know vast majority of these products are made by gno gno india some are sourced from other plants of saint gobin okay and saint gobin as we know has a strong research and development capability and it is that's why uniquely positioned in the abrasives industry so with materials abini okay Uh, a lot of r and d is required to be able to create new materials to to solve the problems that the world faces and a global giant like 40 42 billion euro company like saint gobin is positioned to do just that so gno enjoys that uh, that position of having a very very strong uh, parentage right uh, another thing is interestingly the dependence on any single industry segment for this is lesser than 15% so the biggest is automotive sector okay i mean that is lesser than 15% so there is no industry concentration uh, however the abrasives business is very closely linked to the economy okay so if manufacturing takes a uh, back seat abrasive sales also decline which is why in the last one year abrasive sales have actually fallen for that for the company not by a lot but they have seen a fall okay also the largest customer accounts for less than 4% of the total sales even the largest dealer also accounts for less than 3% of the total sales so they don't have any concentration risk okay yeah, yeah. Especially under the adhesives business uh, they have also launched a, uh, sorry abrasives business they have also launched an ad adhesives and sealant business by acquiring a brazilian company called tech bond okay so now very soon you will see uh, them them competing with the likes of pedalite in the, in the indian market in adhesives and sealants so that's an exciting space as well uh next moving on to the uh, ceramics uh, and uh, plastics business the first uh, uh, bifurcation is silicon carbide so silicon carbide grains are primarily used as raw materials in the manufacture of abrasives also used in refractories refractories are basically uh, materials like uh, used in uh, very high temperature furnaces or very high temperature applications okay and also they are used for stone polishing so in the domestic market like i said there are three major players to manufacture this raw material of silicon carbide and gno is the market leader okay uh, they have plants in tirupati and bhutan but unfortunately abhinit mean, this is one aspect i would like to bring attention to both these plants are at some risk at tirupati uh, there is some uncertainty with respect to power pricing okay and excessively high power pricing is a risk that the company is facing and uh, one very good thing about the organization they are very transparent in their annual reports so one thing that i saw was that they mentioned that a big risk is that extremely high power pricing might make silicon carbide unviable yeah. even, even worse abhin it is that in bhutan where they also manufacture silicon carbide the local environmental commission has been insisting to shift to lower sulfur rpc in place of what they are using today okay so uh, sulfur rpc is basically a raw material that goes into manufacturing of sic okay and bhutan is insisting that you go for a lower sulfur variant but gno cannot do it because its export from india is banned okay yeah. so if, if, if the, the negotiation with the bhutan government is uh, doesn't go through you know uh, they might actually have to shut down their plant and put all the silicon carbide business that they are they have under jeopardy okay yeah. so that's yeah. one of the uh, uh, risks okay moving on the next one is performance ceramics and refract refractories 
or, or PCR. So PCR products find use in applications across industry segments like uh, primary iron and steel, primary non-ferrous metals, petrochemicals, etc. Okay. So they are also used in applications across industry segments like you know your sanitary wear, uh, dinner wear, also defense applications like ballistic armor protections, wear resistance systems, etc. So quite quite a broad range of applicability of performance ceramics and refractories. Okay. Uh, the financial year 2019-20 was bad for abrasives, but good for this side of the business with good growth in domestic volumes and even in export. The company also has a healthy order book uh, for exports for the coming future. Moving on, Abhinit, I'll talk about performance plastics. Okay, so this this company manufactures more than 800 standard and custom made products through their uh, and within performance plastic also they have three business segments which they call engineered components, life sciences, and composites. So each of these segments, you know, it demonstrates innovation responsiveness to customer needs and also expertise in polymers. So polymer is really something that composites and polymers is really a space that is very exciting, growing very rapidly. Okay. Major product lines in this segment are like bearings, seals, tubing and hoses, films, fabrics, foams, etc. Okay. So like, you know, they have broad products, broad industries that they cater to. Okay. Very exciting space within the others business, which uh, constitutes 10% of the revenues. Okay. They have two uh, businesses. One is called certain teed. Okay. So certain teed is a business unit, which offers world-class exterior building products. Okay. Okay. And another uh, business vertical under uh, the other segment is index. It is basically an IT company, uh, which caters to the IT needs of Saint group in group in, uh, 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 in the, okay, all over the world. So that is also based in India and it comes under the Granville Norton business. So that's, that's basically to give you a flavor of the businesses that the company operates in and, uh, uh, you know, uh, quite, quite, quite a lot of things. So uh, one of the reasons we didn't do major industry analysis is that there are so many products. An industry analysis would be a video in itself. But I hope yeah. this gives the viewers a broad idea. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, thank you very much, Kalpak, for that uh, you know excellent uh, briefing about their products. I wouldn't say we went into the details because, like Kalpak said, it's not possible to get into the details of this kind of a company. Okay, right. So uh, moving on to the top line. So here's a you know here's a uh, very broad overview of where their revenues come from. Okay, so on the right hand side, you can see about seventy seven percent of the revenues that they make is domestic, and about twenty three percent is uh, exports. Okay. And this is exports across the different uh, divisions that they have, right? Uh, talking about the specific products, uh, you know, or rather the uh, broadly the division. So uh, the EBIT margins, if you see in the appraisers business is about 12 odd percent. Okay. And whereas in the ceramics and plastics, the EBIT margin is about 15 odd percent, right? So we can very quickly see that ceramics and plastics is a high margin business for the company. Okay. And in the next slide, we are going to look at the historical growth rate for both the divisions. So Kalpak, I hand it over to you to talk about, talk about this particular slide. Right. So, so Abhini, this slide shows you uh, uh, a 15 year period of how the revenues have performed. Okay. So the, uh, the scatter line on the top, the one in blue gives you an idea of the cumulative sales that the company has made totally. The one in uh, yellow is for the abrasives and the one in green, the lower one is for the ceramics and plastics. Okay. Yeah. As you can see, uh, one thing that is very good about the company is that it's a very beautifully growing upward looking line. Okay. So the companies, despite various market situations has been able to consistently grow or at least uh, even in bad years, for example, 2020, 1920 was not a good year, but the company still had stable revenues. Okay. Right. right. That you can observe is that, uh, during the abrasive cycle is much more, uh, uh, dependent on the business cycle than is the ceramics and plastics uh, business. Okay. So whenever right. the sentiment starts turning where the manufacturing slows down, the abrasive sales tend to be a little flat. Okay. And when the business cycle turns and manufacturing picks up, okay. The abrasive uh, uh, sales also increases, but increasingly, uh, you can see that ceramics and plastics is starting to dominate, uh, uh, sales and I'm thinking that very soon there will be an inflection point where the ceramics and plastics business might give abrasives business uh, a run for their money because the CAGR growth also, if you can see, uh, there is a abrasives that are 10% and ceramics and plastics is about 16%. Yeah. yeah. Now looking at, Abhin, and, yeah, tell me. Yeah. 
No, you can carry on. I was just mentioning about this. Yes. Yeah. So now looking at how uh, the individual businesses from a profitability perspective, okay, this is an even uh, this paints an even uh, better picture. The uh, company has, uh, uh, if you see from uh, 2013, 14, the profitability numbers of the company also have really, uh, really risen. The company has started growing very well. Okay, and uh, uh, it is it is majorly on the backs of the uh, innovation that is coming from the ceramics and plastics business uh, as well. So if you can see the profitability for, in both the business segments, almost the same. Although there is a big gap in revenues, the ceramics and plastics business adds a lot of value to this uh, to to Grandville North in India. So the the good thing is that despite a difficult business environment, the company will manage to sell something okay which will overall balance and create a gentle gently upward sloping line which is what i really like about the product uh, and uh, about the about the company right so if i have to quickly compare it to uh, uh, fmcg i don't know why fmcg uh, time and again oh, comes to my mind when i say brand will not in uh, they have such a big basket of products you know and if you if you take any fmcg company in india right uh, uh, one of the inherent strengths of FMCG companies is definitely the fact that their product portfolio is extremely diversified. Okay, and there is uh, the concentration risk in the form of number of customers or the you know the you know the revenue that comes from the biggest dealer. Okay, so those risks are limited to this particular company also, and that is why I I keep on feeling that you know uh, some somewhere this company has an element of a FMCG company in it. Uh, Abhinit, but, uh, you're absolutely right. Okay, and although the end user is not, it's not a, a, a B2C product, but in the B2B space, these are fast-moving goods. Okay, so abrasive wheels get worn out, have to be replaced very quickly, and similar is the case for a lot of their products. Okay, yeah. they have high high sellability for their products for sure. So you can say they are fast-moving in the B2B space to an extent. Another thing I I will agree with you is that. In general, the innovative material space is a very exciting space to be in. Okay, because yep. really, if you look at it, materials and uh, you know innovation in this space is the future. So yep. because the technology landscape is changing so rapidly, everything is changing rapidly. Our cars, our houses, our roads, everything is really uh, moving to a different level. And this revolution is brought about primarily through a materials revolution. Okay, so companies who are pioneers and experts in this field are are exciting inherently. Yeah. So I want to take a few seconds and talk about the uh, biggest competitor, Kalpak. Uh, basically, the market structure of uh, you know abrasives in India is it's a you know until a few years ago it was a duopoly market, and the two major players uh, definitely Grandville Norton has been the market leader. And the second uh, player has been, uh, you know, a very close one. Okay, it has been Carborundum Minerals. Okay, so Carborundum is a company from the Murugappa Group. Okay, and uh, uh, I want to tell our viewers that uh, Mr. Murugappa, who happens to be, uh, you, know, you know, the chief or the head of uh, Murugappa Group, is extremely passionate about the about the material space. Okay, in fact, I was just doing some primary research and I found, you know, on uh, Twitter, if you read his bio, he he mentions about the material space. Okay. So Murugappa Group has presence across, you know, multiple sectors. They are in finance. They are in, you know, uh, uh, they are in the, this material space, and they are in agriculture. They are their brand, brand EID Paris, right? Uh, so th this was the structure of the market until few years ago. But what has started happening recently is many Chinese players have started entering the market. I'll talk about it in the few in the next slides to come. Okay, uh, right. So. Talking about how historically the company has performed in the last 10 years, right? Uh, 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 in the green, the first thing that I want to highlight is Kalpak, no money has been raised in the last 10 years. Okay. I think a couple of crores, maybe five, six crores uh, would have been the net borrowing or, you know, uh, the, the, the amount that the company has borrowed from banks. But otherwise, there is no major equity dilution or no, no borrowings from banks, right? And a very good part is the company has given a bonus issue in uh, FY17. Now again, a bonus issue from a company in the you know in the industrial space or the material space, it's quite uh, it's quite a good thing to see actually. Okay, because you see these things, bonus issues and uh, you know buybacks, they are mainly from the uh, consumer-oriented companies. Okay, so uh, right. Uh, Talking about the the cash generation, the company has uh, you know has been in a very sweet spot. Okay, so uh, all the profits that that they have made in the last ten years, they have converted more than the profits into cash, right? 
so uh, that this is these are the numbers that i'm talking about and uh, talking about uh, investments in fixed assets so yes they do have a, have a quite a lot of uh, maintenance capex requirements okay that is primarily because of the nature of the business okay so the business is such that they have to keep maintaining their machineries and plants and they have a decent amount of maintenance capex requirements and uh, one thing which i want to highlight is the dividends that they have given in the last 10 years okay so if you see the profits that they have made is about 1200 odd crores and out of which about 400 500 odd crores is what they have given by way of dividends okay so it is a handsome dividend payout company okay so if you are an investor who is looking for kind of a safe haven in this particular space so granil norton is something that you may consider uh it's a different matter that the dividend yield on the current price is not very high because the valuations are you know quite high it's not very comfortable okay so i'll talk about the valuations and uh, if you see the growth rates in sales profits uh, operating profits and net profits they are pretty much the same okay so uh, the aspect of operational leverage has been missing in this entire story right so they haven't been able to you know uh, grow their operating profits at a rate higher than the sales right so that is one particular element which you know i would look forward to in this particular company so the moment operating leverage starts starts kicking in uh, we can see some you know we can see some wonders uh, being made to the stock price right right so let me quickly talk about uh, the good things and the bad things about the company on the good side definitely it's a competent management and they have a very long track record okay uh, i want to talk about the intent of the of the company towards the shareholders okay so uh, here's one thing kalpak i have seen uh, many of these companies you know global companies uh, they are kind of hesitant to have uh, you know uh, uh, operations from multiple countries rolling up into india okay but that's not the case with grindel norton so the subsidiary that they have in bhutan the numbers of that subsidiary roll up into the indian company okay so that's quite heartening to see okay so it it show it goes on to prove that the management has good intent towards the towards the minority shareholders okay other than the bhutan subsidiary there are like you mentioned in your opening remarks uh, uh, the it division okay so there's a it division in india which caters to the to the global sand cobain group okay so even the numbers from that division are rolling up into the india business right so these are the things which which go on to show that the management has good intention towards delivering shareholder value right uh, third point is abrasives is a consumable in the industrial space so like you have already mentioned it is a fast moving item it keeps uh, you know the the demand is kind of uh, repetitive in nature it's a recurring demand okay so again you know that element of consumption is there in the company uh, a very important point kalpak is it has strong backward integration with the ceramics division okay so they have this you know entire research and development unit which keeps innovating in the ceramic space and they have this uh, you know division which makes abrasives okay now i want to talk about this linkage when we go on the bad side as well so uh, and uh, uh, finally on the good side abrasives market has only one big structured competitors okay which is carborand and universal okay so it is again in you know, the market structure is a duopoly market and many small chinese players okay Abhi, coming to the bad side yeah one, uh, if you if you guys have seen our video on elantis beck okay versus uh, 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 rainville norton one point we mentioned in that about elantis beck was that it had a restricted geographical market it was not allowed to export uh, by the uh, by the parent group but there is no such restriction from st gobain uh, for uh, granville norton so granville norton is able to also look at overseas markets okay uh, yeah. for for their product portfolio which is a very good thing it's another yeah. another positive for this organization yeah. right right and uh, moving on to the not so good points about this company is competition in the abrasive space is growing very fast okay and uh, you know a lot of small players from china are coming and setting up their shop in india and even the japanese and european players have started getting active okay so uh, apparently from the companies uh, you know annual reports uh, initially the quality of imports used to be you know it used to be subpar okay to what grindel norton was delivering but off late the management has acknowledged that the quality of these imports has started you know getting at par okay so uh, if you if you read the annual report of the company they are kind of worried about the competition okay so they are acknowledging the challenge that competition for the abrasives business is a challenge but uh, on the brighter side the thing is the ceramics and plastics division is picking up fast okay which is not as competitive at the moment as abrasives business is getting okay 
secondly uh, the competition is just uh, you know it's not just because of the geographical price arbitrage from between china and india uh, many players in the in the cutting tools and paints business are getting into uh, you know manufacturing of abrasives okay so uh, like i mentioned earlier there is some kind of a tight linkage between materials and abrasives okay that is the reason why we are seeing players from related businesses like paints and cutting tools getting into the abrasive space okay right. so this is another area of challenge for the company uh, one thing which i particularly hate about the company is uh, about uh, about i think 4 4 to 5 years back they tried merging saint gobain securate okay with grindwell not in india okay now this particular transaction was good for the shareholders of saint gobain securate and not not so good for the shareholders of grindwell norton uh, fortunately the transaction they didn't go through as shareholders did not approve it okay now what can we infer from such deals uh, very honestly it's quite you know it's quite difficult to you know it or rather it would be unfair to say that the management did not have good intentions when they did this okay because see saint gobain is a global group and at some point they would have wanted to consolidate their operations okay from a reporting perspective or from an operational perspective maybe that was the intent okay but uh, definitely it flags off uh, as a red for me that they tried doing something like that uh, and th- that was not not so far ago right it's only about 4 to 5 years back uh, so business is highly dependent on the overall economic sentiment this is something we have already spoken about and uh, like you've already said the silicon carbide business has some environmental issues and uh, the nepal plant the company has very categorically mentioned that it may be permanently closed going ahead bhutan plant yeah sorry the bhutan plant it may be permanently closed uh, going ahead right so what's the verdict on this so uh, we are talking about a company you know again i would say it's, it's kind of a consumption oriented company in the on the industries the construction side Uh, a very very important point is it's an extremely efficient capital allocator okay now that's that's something which is uh, you know it's something to look forward to in a consistent compounder or a long term hold okay so the company qualifies for that uh, secondly it is a hope on manufacturing picking up in india okay so i know we have all been talking about make in india for the last 6 years and the result has not been very satisfactory but a company like grindwell allows you to play a proxy play on the manufacturing sector in india right and uh, finally the integration that we see between the different divisions is something that i like about the company okay yeah. uh, let me take a minute and talk about the valuations so here's the thing uh, we are talking about a company which has a very successful you know track record but there are challenges as well okay and challenges mainly in terms of competition okay so we may be looking at some kind of a margin compression in the you know in the abrasives business going ahead but it is expected to be compensated by the high growth uh, ceramics and plastics business okay so uh, definitely the valuation is not very comfortable at this stage okay uh, that's something that you need to consider if you you know if you're a if you're a value investor okay uh business uh, uh, you know we would rate it a 4 on 5 uh, you know i we have already given enough of description and you know explanation about why that would be so okay and promoters had it not been for the merging incident uh, it would have been a 5 on 5 right so that's all guys uh, i hope uh, you like the video and uh, in case you uh, really liked it please do uh, uh, subscribe to our channel Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Wish you a happy Diwali again.